Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to address what has easily become the most popular question I have received over the last couple of years, and that is tiling toolpaths. Now, for those who don't know what toolpath tiling is, toolpath tiling is a way to carve a project or piece of material that is larger than your CNC router's capacity. Now, in the case of this project, the main material piece I'm carving is 72 inches or 6 feet long. And the max capacity of my CNC router in the Y direction is 48 inches or 4 feet long. So what toolpath tiling is, is it's a way to split the toolpaths necessary to create this project into segments that you define that your machine is capable of cutting. Now this can be done in several ways. We can tile it so that each piece is cut on a separate piece of material or we can do what's known as a pass-through in X or Y. Well, for example, my project here, where the piece of material is longer than my machine bed, I can tile the tool paths necessary to carve this project so that it'll carve the first section down here. Then I can move the entire piece of material down in this direction and carve the second half of the project. So in order to do that, we'll need to start thinking about mounting the material and how we're going to accommodate the aligning process. The most common way of doing this is by using dowels or pins. You drill a hole in the piece of material and into the spoil board drill another hole up here somewhere and then when we go to shift the piece of material in Y to align this hole up here with our hole in our spoil board down here we use that pin to register the material on so we know that we're in the correct position. This being carved into a six foot fence board, just a standard six foot fence board, I didn't want to drill any holes in the material itself. So I've complicated the issue by creating a sled, an 11 inch wide sled that I can fasten my material to using tape and CA glue or double sided tape, then drill my alignment holes into the sled rather than my project. Now for this I used the sheets within the Vectric software. My first sheet up here is named growth chart and that's this one right here and we can see that it's five and three-eighths of an inch wide by six foot long. The tiling sled I'm creating is on another piece of material that's 11 inches wide by 6 feet long. And it has these two holes right here. So when I create this sled, mount my piece of material to it, I can drill this alignment hole down here all the way through the sled and then down into the spoil board by a roughly a half inch. And this hole up here gets drilled through the material only. So these holes will be drilled to a different depth. I don't need a hole in my spoil board up here. I just need this hole right here to be able to put my alignment pin through the, ma the sled material and into the spoil board down here. 
And again, this will make a lot more sense when we get outside on the CNC router and you see it in action. As I alluded to just a couple of seconds ago, this overall project length is six feet. My machine table has a Y capacity of four feet. So I've decided I'm going to break this into two three foot tiles. So what I did was over here on my tiling sled, I found a position. Oops, I already have a guide there. I found a position three inches up from my Y zero. And I put a one quarter inch circle. That's the hole that I'm going to drill through the sled and down into the spoil board. Then knowing that I would be moving this sled and my work material three feet or 36 inches in this direction, I went up 36 inches from this guide to here. And this guide is at 39 inches from Y. Remember, the guide down on the bottom is at 3 inches. 36 plus 3 is 39. This is where my second alignment pin hole is, right here at 39 inches. Now let me turn off my guides to avoid confusion. So the first thing I'll do is calculate these tool paths because both of these holes are going to be drilled to a different depth. I'll calculate these two tool paths and these will be the first G code that I run. I'll mount my work material on my sled, fasten it to the table with a couple of screws, then drill this hole, then this hole. Then I can start with the G code on my actual project itself. Let's go ahead over to the toolpath side and see what that looks like. Now as you can see, I already have my toolpaths created. Again, these are the two drill holes for my two alignment pins. Drill one is has a max depth of 0.6875. This is going to go through the material and into the spoil board. Drill 2 has a max depth of 0.4425. That's going to go through the sled slightly just to give me a hole in the sled material. These will be the first two G codes I run. So, because they both use the same bit, I can save G code for these into one file. So, I'll select both of these toolpaths, come over here to save toolpaths, and if we look, we have a check mark in output tiled toolpaths. I do not want to tile these toolpaths. This is going to be done without tiling. And that's important to get that right. So we'll uncheck. Saving tool pass with tiling turned off may lead to moves which exceed machine or material limits. Not in this case. This is 39 inches is the max Y position. That's well within my machine's capacity. I'm going to output these two visible toolpaths to one file. And I'll save this toolpath. Navigate to the folder. This is the tiling sled growth chart. Tiling sled, that's important. And I'll save. So now, when I come down here to my G code folder, there is the G code for my two alignment holes. With that done, I can now switch over to my main project. As you can see, I already have 
my toolpaths calculate. And I can preview all toolpaths. And there we go. There's my completed project. That's what it's going to look like. Well, now what I need to do is I need to set those toolpath tiles. So I'll come up here to the tile toolpaths icon and I'll click. And that opens up the tiling manager. Now, if we just read down here, toolpath tiling allows you to divide toolpaths into a set of tiles if you are limited by the size of your machine or material. When the toolpaths are saved, the toolpaths will be saved in sections, one for each tile, with TN underscore added to the start of each toolpath name, where N equals the number of the tile. And I'll explain what that means in just a second. All toolpaths will be saved with the origin in the bottom left corner at zero, 00. So in this case, they will all be saved with my X0, Y0 origin down here on the bottom left corner. And that's exactly where I want them. To start tiling, we'll click Tile Toolpaths. Now from here we have three choices. We can go with individual tiles, we can feed through in the X direction, or we can feed through in the Y direction. Now individual tiles look something like this. You would enter the size of the piece of material and that's what it would divide up our toolpaths into. This is how you can create large signs, for instance, an 8 foot by 4 foot sign using 2 foot squares. You would create a series of 2 foot squares that once assembled would create that large sign. You can feed through an X. If you have your machine oriented to where your gantry moves along the X axis, then this is how you would do it. I am feeding through in Y. And then we get down here, the tile width that's set by your material width. Now we can see I have already put my tile height as 36 inches because again I want to cut this six foot project in two 36 inch tiles. I'm going to use an overlap of one quarter inch, meaning that when I cut this tile 36 inches, it's actually going to come up 36 and one quarter of an inch. This is done just in case there are some vectors that cross that 36 inch mark. So if I have a vector that comes up here and stops, I want that bit to go all the way past by a quarter of an inch so I don't get that round radius where the bit went up to the end of the, that tile and stopped. I want it to go beyond just a little bit. We'll click Update Tiles. Now you have a choice here to machine the smallest tile first. All this has to do with is the numbering system. Now if we look over here in our 2D view, when I do this, we can just barely see if we look, we can see T2, and then we see a line right here, then we see T1 down here. Now T1 is in red because that is the active tile. If I switch over to the active tile being T2, this kind of grays out and gets ghosted out. And now T2 is in red. So you see what I'm getting at. We have a 
dividing line right here, this is tile 1 and this is tile 2. Since they're equal sizes, checking machine smallest tile first is not really applicable to me. But if by chance there was a smaller tile, for instance, if I was going to carve a four foot tile, then a two foot tile, I would check machine smallest tile first. It would label this T1, and this would be the first tile carved. That's not what I'm going to do. I don't need to do that. So let me go back here to T1 just to illustrate something further. I have my tile overlap set at one quarter of an inch. If we come here and we look at where the overlap is, we can see right here is the dividing line. This is tile one, this is tile two. We can see this shaded area right here. That's where this bit is going to overlap. Because you see, I have the dividing line goes right through my three foot mark. So, by setting this tile overlap of a quarter inch, this shaded area is also going to be machined. So, it'll carve this, it'll carve this, it'll come up here, and it'll carve all of this out. Then, when I cut tile two, it won't need to come down here and carve this. It will carve down to the tile border. And I won't get a radius down here because it's already been carved away in tile one. Again, this will make a, a lot more sense when we get outside and start carving on the CNC. Draw tool paths in original position for visualization. This has to do with the 3D view. If I click on these tool paths, and again we're looking at tile one, we can see where these tool paths are drawn. If I click on tile two, we can see where those tool paths are drawn. This check mark here, it draws the tool paths in the position that shows the entire full project. If I uncheck this, it drew the tool paths in relation to where that x, y, zero is when it goes to carve this tile. Well, that's confusing as heck. So, by drawing the toolpaths in their original position, we can visualize how they're going to be carved. It will carve tile one. Then we'll move the material. Then we'll carve tile two. So, our toolpaths were calculated and previewed before we entered into tiling at all. Let me open up the preview. I will reset the preview. Now I'll go into tile one and I'll preview all toolpaths. And we see it carved the bottom of our text and the measurement marks and numbers up to that dividing line and then went beyond that quarter inch. Now I'll switch over to tile two. We'll back out. And again, I'll preview all tool paths. There is the second tile. Our design looks good. The tool paths look good. Let's go ahead and close. And now, We'll save 
the tiles. I'll come up here. And now we have to also look at what bits are used. Now here I have a 8th inch two flute end mill. And here I have a 1 8 inch two flute end mill. So I'll select this tool path and this tool path. These are both clearance passes. I'm going to save tool paths to one file and crucial, make sure output tiled tool paths is checked. I'll click save tool path and this is the growth chart. I'm going to change the name to 125 end mill. Save. Then I'm going to uncheck. And because these are the same 30 degree V bit, again, save visible tool paths to one file, output tiled tool paths, save. And I'll change these to. 30 degree V bit. And before I click save, we can look up here and we can see these are my two clearance passes that I just saved. T1 being for tile 1, T2 being for tile 2. When I click save over here, it's also going to save a T1 growth chart, 30 degree V bit, and a T2 growth chart, 30 degree V bit. That's what this TN meant when it says here where N equals the number of the tile. In this case, T1 and T2. I'll click save. Then I'll come into my G code file and we see I have a growth chart 30 degree V bit toolpath for tile one and a 1 8 inch end mill toolpath for tile one. Then I have a 30 degree V bit toolpath for tile two and a 1 8 inch end mill toolpath. For tile two. I also have my tiling sled growth chart tool path. Those are the two holes that I'm drilling into the sled that I'm mounting this growth chart material onto. Remember that the important parts of tool path tiling are to Figure out and keep in mind how you're going to mount your project and which direction you're going to feed through. In my case, I'm feeding through Y and I want to split my project into two 36 inch tiles. When you set tile tool paths, and you create your height and any overlap if you want it, it does the rest automatically. Again, more of this will make sense in the next video in this series when we actually go outside and run this G code I just created and you see it all in action. Now, I know there's no way I answered every question you're going to have about toolpath tiling. So, as usual, this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me any question you'd like about anything I presented in this video or any of my previous videos. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 
3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to give a special shout out and say a special thank you to all of my channel members. If you would like some information on becoming a channel member, just click that little join button down there next to the subscribe button. A panel will pop up and a video will play that will tell you all about channel membership. And remember, channel members, check the community tab here on my YouTube page for the link for this Monday's member only live stream. So, I hope to see you all this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, whether you become a channel member or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.